Now, what the papers say is kind of important during an election. Whether it's as important as the papers think is not for us to say. But reading all about it is our next guest, John Finnamore. So, most of the papers have now declared their support, and it's been enthralling. The Mirror, who've endorsed Labour in every election since 1945, are endorsing Labour... Whilst the Telegraph, after backing the Tory party for 17 consecutive elections, will this time be packing for Tory party. (laughs) The nearest thing to a surprise has been the Guardian shyly proposing to the Lib Dems. Although, can you imagine what a boring wedding that would be? (laughs) A hand-fasting ceremony in a sacred circle of elms and nothing to drink but mead. (laughs) They announced their choice in a strangely moving editorial. Citizens have votes. Newspapers do not. However, if The Guardian had a vote, it would cast enthusiastically for the Liberal Democrats. Oh, a little paper that only wanted to be able to vote. (laughs) It's like an extract from Pinocchio. Oh, Papa, I wish I was a real boy, so I could hop and skip and vote enthusiastically for the Lib Dems. (laughs) But if the Liberals have had an easy ride from The Guardian and The Independent, they've certainly had trouble with the rest of the press, especially since they had the impertinence to actually, you know, interest people in voting for them. The Sun pitched in, as befits a paper, the political editor of which recently said, it's my job to see that Cameron Effingwell gets into Downing Street. They accused Clegg of being a political disaster, unable to run a whelk stall, and memorably being less famous than a horse. This was a poll revealing one in four people failed to recognise his name, while almost all had heard of the racehorse Cato Starr. They went on... The Ladbrook survey of almost a thousand punters... (laughs) was held to mark the start of Cheltenham tomorrow. Yeah, nor did the Sun hold back from bringing out their biggest guns to fight the menace. Becky, 26, is concerned by the prospect of electoral reform in a hung parliament. (laughs) Yeah, I I can see she is. Um, It's it's awful when you get news like that just when you're in the middle of getting dressed. (laughs) I, I tell you what, I bet she's not as concerned about it as Rupert 79 who, let us devoutly hope, has remembered to put his shirt on. (laughs) Because, as former Sun editor David Yelland recently wrote... If the Liberal Democrats actually won the election or held the balance of power, it would be the first time in decades that Murdoch was locked out of British politics. Now, that's not to suggest that any sort of deal exists between Murdoch and Cameron. We've got no way of knowing that. All we do know for sure, because Cameron has quite rightly entered it into the Commons Register of Members' Interests, is that in August 2008, Rupert Murdoch's son-in-law provided a private place to fly Cameron to see Murdoch for drinks and dinner aboard his yacht. Of course, there's nothing wrong in that, and nor does anyone know what was discussed at that meeting. It may well have gone like this. I just uh, flew you here to say, David, that I hate you and everything you stand for, but uh, (laughs) damn it, my editors are so strong and independent-minded, I don't see how I can stop the sun, the times and the news of the world endorsing the Conservatives. It makes me cross. (laughs) I know how you feel, Rupert, because I loathe you too, and it infuriates me that my promises to freeze the licence fee and abolish Ofcom and make BT share its cables will coincidentally benefit you so much. Honestly, I'm I'm hopping mad. (laughs) I expect that probably is how it went. (laughs) But of course, for the truly creative click bashing, you have to go to the Daily Mail. And they surpassed themselves. In the days after the Lib Dem poll boost, they accused Clegg of a Nazi slur on Britain, of working for a firm that lobbied for Gaddafi after he left, but still, and of being a little bit... There's no nice way to say this. Foreign. His wife is Spanish, his mother Dutch, his father half Russian, and his spin doctor German. Is there anything British about Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg? They asked about the British, born British educated Britain from Britain. (laughs) And went on to say... Ironically, his mother was interned by the Japanese during the war. Yeah, that is ironic, isn't it? (laughs) I'm sure the irony of it tickled her at the time. (laughs) How ironic, she must have thought. Even though I'm a foreigner, some other foreigners are locking me up. (laughs) You'd think all of us foreigners would get on. (laughs) Given we're basically all the same. Also very concerned that Clegg was representing himself as less posh than Cameron. Though I, I think he only ever claimed to live in Sheffield, not to live in poverty. <laughs> Those things aren't necessarily synonymous. As the Mail shortly discovered, to its wide-eyed astonishment. 
Last night it emerged that Nick Clegg's Sheffield home is a four-bedroom property in one of the city's smartest streets. Couple with three children in four-bedroom house shop. <laughs> But it got worse. The Lib Dem leaders' neighbours include doctors, lawyers and dentists. <laughs> My God, the man pretends not to be posh and yet he hobnobs with dentists? <laughs> but naturally, they saved the worst for last. Visitors there tell of expensively covered modern chairs. <laughs> Well, of course they do. <laughs> I imagine it's all you can do to shut them up about it. I mean, when you've seen an expensively covered modern chair, it's not something you keep to yourself. <laughs> ah, there I were, I tell ye. After six days hiking through all four of the bedrooms at last, <laughs> I come into the vast hall of the Sultan of Sheffield himself. Exotic lawyers and dentists <laughs> flittered hither and thither and there. Standing before me. Chairs. You mean bad old chairs, Captain, covered in sackcloth and animal dung? Oh, no. No, my boy. Modern chairs. But the male's finest hour came when they discovered Nick Clegg once told a mildly amusing story about how he had set fire to someone's cacti while on an exchange trip to Germany. The male were incensed. <laughs> Not obviously about the possibility he had set fire to something German, but about the possibility that he hadn't. But is this story true? The Daily Mail has tried to find anyone in Germany who remembered it. <laughs> oh, good. I was hoping someone would do that before I decide which way to vote. <laughs> but, but who have you asked specifically? Josef Scheutzer. Chairman of Münchner Kaktin Freunde, the local cactus society in Munich. Of course, the Münchner Kaktin Freunde. I can't believe we haven't heard from them already this election. And what did the Freunde of the little Kaktin have to say? Well, I have never heard of this. Still, good to hear from you. And the mail didn't stop there. You see, the problem with the Munchner Kaktin Freunde is that they're the only the Freunde of the Kaktin in München. <laughs> is that enough? If only there were some sort of umbrella group of all cactus societies in Germany. A spokesman for Deutsche Kaktin Gesellschaft, <laughs> the umbrella group of all cactus societies in Germany, added... No, sorry, not heard about this. <laughs> Not that the male didn't give Clegg the right of reply. A spokesman for Mr Clegg said, Are you implying that we're making this cactus story up? I sincerely hope not, because he may well look mild-mannered, but you can only push Nick Clegg so far. By all means, call him a half-Dutch, Nazi-sympathising, immigrant-loving, expenses-fiddling foreigner lounging in his four-bedroom house whilst Colonel Gaddafi and a constant stream of dentists <laughs> loving to have a go on his expensively covered modern chairs, but don't you ever, ever suggest he's never set fire to a cactus. Thank you very much.